So guys, we're here today, Sam from Whalen Games and uh, from business. <laughs> nope, we're we're not here for ourselves, guys. Can't help us out. He's taking us around. We're going to show him how. Yeah, we're going to learn how MDF is made, which is really important. And we are not here for our own interest. All right, guys. See you later. In this video, we're going to learn all about how MDF buildings are made. All the way from Autodesk and CADS to pre-painting the MDF sheeting to laser cutting and how War Cradle Scenics produces on such a massive scale. And how this small team of two stays on top of quality control and how the product is packaged, ready to be shipped to the consumer. Today we are at War Cradle's MDF factory with super best friends Taylor and Tyler, which yes, that is massively confusing, and of course, overseeing the large-scale industrial equipment health and safety frog. Like with a lot of today's miniature wargaming products and supplies, these MDF kits begin life in CADS software. The vast majority of kits are designed and prepped in this unassuming workstation. It may surprise you to know that everything from initial design to final packaging is done by Taylor and Tyler. Super best friend Taylor is able to make initial 3D mockups of the final product and simultaneously manipulate and test fit the buildings in the same virtual workspace. As much as I try to overcomplicate the filming of this stuff, there's not much in the way of conceptual design or meetings that go on, no real clutter or fluff. Taylor is simply given some conceptual ideas and allowed to freely create products at this workstation. The 3D model also contains laser instructions, much like a 3D printer file. On the other side of the room, but definitely in shouting distance, super best friend Tyler preps sheets of MDF by painting them. Most War Cradle kits at this point come with two sprues of different colored MDF, so that every building is two-tone or sometimes three or four tone. Painting MDF has always been a colossal faff for me, so the fact that these kits are pre-coloured goes a long way to making War Cradle Scenics just that little bit more accessible and tabletop ready that little bit faster. Once dried, the MDF sheets are loaded into a CNC machine, the laser cutter between you and me, and the, uh, well, they push the go button basically. Depending on the detail of the kits and how busy they are, this machine can get the job done in anywhere from an hour to a whole day. Sheets are laid out in CAD to produce as little waste as possible, with certain fixtures and accessories being shared across multiple kits of the same line. first quality control process kicks in with super best friend Tyler making sure there's no scorching and that any through lines have successfully been scored so that they are in fact through lines. Tyler then performs the coolest John Wick style handoff to Taylor and he does this every time in slow motion. Each MDF sheet is then checked again for any misprints or miscuts before being wiped clean of 
dust or contaminants. This is a super clean workshop, but Taylor takes his time and his wiping duties very seriously and he just kept going and going and going. I debated making an ASMR video of Taylor cleaning and checking MDF panels because, yeah, well, there was just so much footage. Along with everything else produced by War Cradle, product goes into the packing area and the two-man operation continues, ensuring everything is in the package that needs to be there and getting cling filmed and stocked and ready for distribution. Come on down to the Wayland Games Warehouse and Emporium based down here in the sunny little town of Hockley. What's up guys, Tony D here, back in perpetual forward motion, and I'm here to talk to you about today's sponsor, Wayland Games Warehouse, Website, and Emporium. Look at all this forward motion space I got. Have you ever thought to yourself, uh, Hi, Kevin. Man, what a friendly place to work. Have you ever thought to yourself, man, what I need is some more stuff when we agree? Hi, John. John's a new customer here with Wayland Games, and he isn't quite sure how he's going to do a Warhammer. But don't worry, this is Sam. He knows all about the different kinds of hammers that John might like. Getting into Wargaming can be a confusing business, but we're always happy to help a customer with whatever they might need. That's it, John. Go big or go home. Attaboy. With a massive range of first and third party products in store and the UK's largest online retailer with the Warhammers, you better believe John can find anything he wants. Come back anytime, John. Along with this, our Emporium staff are always on hand and ready to help with any query you might have. Models, paints, snacks, drinks, and a toilet that flushes. Whatever you need, Wayland's got it. Whoever you are and whatever you are, you're always welcome to the Wayland Games Warehouse, Website, Emporium, and Gaming Spaces. Unless you're a giant octopus. Stop trying to get in. You're too big, you're too wet, and there's nothing for you here. So check the link in the description down below to see what Wayland Games has for you. All right, bye now. You know that stuff costs less at Wayland. Wayland. You'll never leave without a smile at Wayland. Back at the studio, it's time to put this kit together. Currently, and potentially at the time of this video release, this kit isn't available yet, so enjoy a sneak peek of the Immortal Tomb series. All War Cradle assembly instructions are available online as PDFs, and with smaller kits like this, you can find it as part of a sub-assembly page on the main Immortal Tombs PDF. The kit pops out quite nicely and only needs a smidge of super glue to hold it in place. You've seen me do a whole load of these kits before where I assembled the entire town of Dunsmouth for my not more time board and because assembly is easy and the buildings are pre-coloured, I was able to populate the board in about a day. This is where the two-tone comes into play. Different coloured pieces of MDF layered up go a long way in terms of adding flavour to what is essentially a two-dimensional set of panels.
And probably within about 10 minutes, we've got our structure finished. A nifty immortal tomb world building ready for the tabletop. I could even see myself adding LEDs inside these things to add a little bit more whack to them. And because the insides are hollow, fitting the lights and battery packs would be a piece of piss. If you enjoyed this, we have two more videos coming with War Cradle Studios where we learn about how both resin and plastic miniatures are made. Everything from concept to mold making to picking and painting showroom models. Thanks to War Cradle for inviting us to their factory and Wayland Games for bringing us into their space to check out how things are being manufactured and distributed. And of course, thank you hugely to my wonderful patron community who continue to kick ass and chew bubblegum. I'm looking forward to things being back to normal pretty soon, guys, so we can catch up and meet up on a hobby Discord hangout. Cheers. I'm out of here.